Oh, I see it. I can't see anything. Well, it seems to be recording, which means that we are here. <laughs> and Jenny's back again. How was England? Hey, Mel. Hello. Um, England was lovely, um, but of course, it was a very sad time. The, mm -hmm. the, the Queen died while I was on the Eurostar about to go into the tunnel. Um, so I arrived in London and, and the second I arrived, there were already, you know, all the posters of the Queen everywhere. It was pretty intense. And then, of course, I was going to a funeral, so it made it uh, very, very oh, intense. Yeah. Yeah. So you went but, to um, London to see the Queen, huh? <laughs> I did. But, but it was amazing to see so many South Africans as well. Uh, I was in Putney, so I was in, like, South Africanville. And, um, and I met up with quite a few of them, and it was amazing. Do you have wine in cans in South Africa? I, we may well have, but I'm not a big wine drinker, so I would not, it wouldn't have come across my radar, but I don't remember having seen them. I think about cans, it's like those things yeah. like Esprit, you know, the wine coolers in cans. Yeah, really strange. I went um, to meet a South African actually at the Tate Modern, and, mm. um, and you know, the only wine that they have there, it looks very, very fancy. In fact, I should post some photos. Um, but it was South African wine in cans. That's very strange. Where from Stellenbosch or from the um, Orange River fa uh, Farmers Winery? Do you know where? Which, uh, which it was lunchtime, so I wasn't drinking wine. <laughs> <laughs> I had water, but the water was in a cardboard box. So it's obviously all about recycling or something. It must be. Hmm. Because um, I've never had yeah. water in a cardboard box before. No, water should not be in a cardboard box. I still love the idea about the fact that there's just water that you can drink in the streets in France. You know, I mean, you know, yes. it's not none of this problem where if you need water, it's free. OK, yeah, you don't have to pay yeah. an absolute arm and a leg like we do here in South Africa. Anyway, one of the things we know we and and to add insult to injury, they're wanting to put electricity rates up by what, something like 30 something percent. I'm like, what, what are you going to charge us for? You can't even give us power anyway. You know, you've taken all the power. You have all the power. Oh, and yeah, I'm, then yeah. I go across and I'm sitting and thinking, do the ministers get load shed as well? The ministers and all their lackeys, do they yeah. get load shedding in their houses? I don't think so somehow. So they, there's no, no. Ur urgency, even though Cyril came running back to South Africa again. And I loved the, the Rico, you know, Rico. Um, does yeah. Adam and Eve and he does his thing was it him or was it it was one of the cartoonists saying you know rinse and repeat the cycle <laughs> oh we've got a power problem oh we must come home do something oh we'll have a whole bunch of people oh let's do this oh let, and then rinse and repeat <laughs> okay yeah, so nothing yeah, ever yeah. did you see Charles Johnston who normally takes fabulous photos of South Africa did you see his comment it went totally viral where he said you know ESCOM has asked us to use electricity sparingly well, if only they would give us some, then we could try to comply. <laughs> yeah, I'm just like... But, but Mel, in <sighs> seriousness, what happens with fridges now? Because, you know, it's, it's many hours that you've got your electricity off. <laughs> yeah, it's, she's talking to the cat, not just saying about her electricity being off. <laughs> um, um, so what, what has happened? happened? Well... So what you I, know, I had to replace a fridge in the last load of load shedding. Because of the load shedding? Yeah, and um, so replacing a refrigerator, although it doesn't, no, we had four hours, well, we had nine and a half hours of load shedding yesterday at my place. So what happened over the weekend, though, which is even worse, is that there are these teams now who know when the load shedding is happening in an area, and they go when it's being load shedding, and they cut off all of the cables on all the poles. So we end up, when we're supposed to come back on, there's no power because there's oh, no more cables. No, because that's a safer time to steal, obviously. Yeah, because they're, they're not live. So they just come and steal all of the cables and the switches and this, that, and the other. Oh. And so there's been a, a big thing, a huge kind of Jeez. like um, looking into this. Well, and once again, I'd just like Sorry. to say Michael's son, Councillor Michael's son, um, who's doing so, so much amazing work. I mean, he goes out with the teams to go and catch cable thieves at night. He's fantastic. Amazing. I mean, I, that's brave. I, yeah, he's, you know, he's really, he goes out obviously with the police and the teams yeah, like that, yeah. but they, they've been doing quite a good job at um, catching these guys in well, the act. 
You know, here in France, it's quite interesting because we're all talking about possible load shedding. And, you know, we've been um, told to, to reduce our electricity usage now while it's still warm so that we have enough electricity for the winter because of the whole Russia-Ukraine thing. Um, well, sorry, not the thing terrible war um, well, it is a thing it's a horrible yeah, thing yeah. yeah it's a horrible thing but thing just seems oh um anyway really interesting how seriously people have taken it so i go to friends houses and they're all <laughs> and then everything's candle lit and um and then the other day i went into the laundromat and i like i couldn't see i'm like oh my gosh what's happened and he says no 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 we're just conserving electricity so he's using it to do his laundry stuff but no lights on you've just got to fumble around in the dark but well <laughs> welcome to our world i mean Sheesh, as I said, you know, yesterday, and what was really bizarre, we had power out from six o'clock last night until 10.30, okay? Power last came back night. on, and then we had load shedding again at 12 o'clock. So, I mean, the power was on for an hour and a half. It's hardly enough time to actually charge anything, but I suppose at that time of night, you know, we're just becoming a nation of people who get into bed at six or seven, eight o'clock these days. Ah, <laughs> what can wow, you do? Yeah, that's true. But now, what happens to people who have electric fences around their houses? Well, in the northern suburbs, with the people who have got like lot more money and uh, a lot more space, they you hear the gentle hum of generators oh, going okay. off. And I did see that Owen Lonza, who's a he he's works in the entertainment industry in here in South Africa. He says he's living in that patch where they have different load shedding. So his entire life is just one generator coming on then that goes off and another generator somewhere else in the other area comes on so he just spends his entire life being surrounded by the sound of generators but on the whole i mean a lot of them have battery backups but if you're going for four hours without um any electricity the batteries get too flat yeah. and yeah so i mean it's just one of those things you i've know. seen um i think the da are investigating this week asking questions and everything on just what's happening with the health system because uh, it's not great for a lot of hospitals and no. surgeries piling up, et cetera. Yeah, no, it's, it's, um, there's a word for it. I'm not going to use the <laughs> word, though, in polite company. Anyway, so let's Did just hope that now... Did you see with the Queen's funeral, just to bring in a little bit of humor, is, um, you know, a lot of South Africans got very upset about give back the Cullinan diamond, et cetera, et cetera. And we won't go into that now. But um, one of the things that was very funny on, on Twitter was a South African posted a photo inside Westminster Abbey and you know there were those huge orangey yellowy candles um, mm. that were really really huge and they said forget about the diamond give us the candles <laughs> yeah, yeah and I did see that one which I thought was really funny <laughs> yeah, my, my whole thing is, is that if you're going to insist on the diamond coming back to South Africa well actually you know what I would say auction it off Okay, to the highest bidder, whoever it is in the world, okay, then take that money and give it to gift of the givers. Yeah. That's all there is. Do not yeah. give it to the government, okay, give it to somebody who will do some good work for the people. That's yeah. it. End of discussion. You can take it. Otherwise, you Finish know what? If, if the, the people hadn't come and actually mined, that diamond would still be sitting in the ground and would not would just be a piece of rock, which is what I think diamonds are anyway. I don't know why <laughs> there's so much. <laughs> why, so, why is there so much, like, you know, um, perceived value. this money, so perceived value for a piece of shiny mm. rock. I mean, uh, I find much that's what nicer Gulliver rocks. Travels is about. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think everybody should start reading again. Anyhow, so anyway, Ram, let's hope now that Ramaphosa is back yes. that um, something <laughs> will actually get done. We were all expecting stage eight to be announced. And we've been like, shall we go out now and become like those um, preppers and go and buy hundreds of tins of tin food that you can eat straight oh, from the yeah, tin without yeah. having to ca like heat it up and all of that kind of stuff. So it's like, all right, yeah. whatever. Oh, okay, so okay. anyway, he, he, um, he missed the UN General Assembly, didn't he? Yes, so Naledi Pandor, the foreign minister, or Durko minister, as they like to say, um, is, is there at the moment doing a great job. I mean, she really is a good representative for South Africa. I think she's mm. really smart. Mm. So she's there. But Ramaphosa also had his meetings with um, Kamala Harris and then mm. later with Joe Biden before he went to London and before stage six. Uh, I, think, I think it happened all on Friday, didn't it? He, he saw them and stage six happened and... Sure. 
And with Biden, did you see he wouldn't back down? He's, um, he's saying you can't tell us to choose sides. Between, mm. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. Well, we'll stay away from that particular argument because we know who's in the wrong there, but anyhow. <laughs> uh, okay, so the good news, though, of course, is that yeah. the Springboks actually won in Argentina this, this <gasps> past After weekend. Not that, that I got to scandal. see it. Uh, well, I didn't I mean, get to see it were because you of load shedding. shedding. Yeah. Shame so many people say that. Um, yeah, I, I was so happy for them because there was so much scandal beforehand and, um, and, a, and a lot of very funny memes and jokes as well. But, but it was just great that actually the players just pulled together and played for their country and, and, and stayed focused, you know, which must mm. have been incredibly difficult to be away from home and have all these newspaper headlines. Oh, well, as far well as I'm them. concerned, they took it, they took it, they ate it like a green milly, said fat on fluffy. Don't <laughs> say. Lekker, lekker, and, and now they're going to be in, in Durban on Saturday, and it's the yep. last match of the series. So it's a really important one because currently South Africa is sitting tie with New Zealand and we've got 14 points yeah. each. So, so hopefully we win it. Um, I'm just going to have to, let me just go on to Eskom Sapush quickly. What time is the game? So I can go and see <laughs> what time, <laughs> if I'm going to be load shed again for this one too. <laughs> oh, you're oh. terrible. No, okay, so, <laughs> all right, some other news from the expats. What's been going on with uh, Princess Charlene? Oh, really, really sweet. She, you know, she's always cared so much about animals. She was in South Africa for the rhino. Uh, she's also worked with the, do you call it RSPCA or SPCA? I've forgotten. RSPCA? Um, I think NSPCA. Oh, that's it. RS is, is the England one. Okay, so she's been working with them, with Kevin uh, Richardson, Tanda Foundation, etc., etc. And now, uh, last week, her and Prince Albert have um, laid the first stone to build a refuge in Monaco for animals there. So it'll be Monaco's SPCA. Oh, and, cool. Yeah, and, and Prince Albert said she will be the president of it. Um, we're, and I can't think of anybody better because she truly does care about the animals. So, so that's lovely. And, and also just out of interest for any South Africans in the south of France or Monaco or south uh, or, or, or Italy across the border, the palace is going to be open this weekend for free um, as part of celebrating European Heritage Day or something. Mm. And they've just done a lot of renovations and you'll be able to see how Princess Charlene lives when she is at the palace. Um, Living in a yeah. palace with, with electricity. She's so lucky. <laughs> 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 okay, so news from... Um, from abroad, I call it from South Africa's South Africans who are living abroad. Uh, what what is this about accents abroad? I mean, I know that you're talking oh. about in Noosa, which is where you live, used to live, and I finally got to go there, but you weren't living there anymore. Oh no, that was such a waste. Um, new, and I'm sure I've said this before, but you know they call Noosa new out of South Africa because it has attracted <laughs> so many South Africans. So that's what Noosa stands for. Um, oh, who is our Gus Silva? Gus yes. Silver is visiting family in Australia. That's and, right. I saw yes, that, yes. And he just shared the story about how difficult it is with a South African accent when you're abroad, and especially when you're in Australia or America, I suppose, and you want to – I once tried to – I think I may, may have told you – I once tried to order blast from the past, and there was no ways. No, nobody – you know, you have to say blast from the past. And, um, and likewise with him, he tried to order something using the word plant – but you've got to say plan. <laughs> you know? What's a plan? I didn't realize there were American or Australians. You know? <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? It's very English because in England it's the same. You know, there's some people who would say plant and there's some that would say plant. Well, and I suppose it just depends on your accent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Where, where you're from in England. It's, yeah, and um, it's them that went to Australia. So it's th those two, that's that accent. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, but well, as far really as I'm concerned, there's only one way to say it and it's plant. <laughs> It's like you say and, piano. But, but, but <laughs> dance, dance. Like, I, I don't think I could ever say dance again. It, it just sounds. But, but, but that's what lots of South Africans were saying is that you can struggle and struggle and keep your South African accent. Or if you want to be understood, you just have to change it. And then people were talking about, um, 
you know, and you just adapt a few words like yogurt instead of yogurt or, or something oh. like that. And I know that's uh, I hate it with yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't taste, it doesn't sound tasty. But um, what was really, really funny and what I really relate to is like the one guy, his name's Alan, and he said whenever he tells people his name's Alan, they say, Ellen, that's a funny name for a man. And, <laughs> And then, and then, like for me, I've, I've just had to become Janie because whenever I say, you know, it's Janie, everybody goes, oh, okay, hello, Janie. <laughs> well, it's like so frustrating. And uh, another guy was saying he he had to get used to being called Mork in Australia instead <laughs> of Mark. Yes. I can just see it. Oh, God. It kind of reminds me of that one scene from um, Love Actually where yeah. the guy goes over to America to those girls and they're making him say all these things like, <laughs> yes. bottle, bottle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I, I, I look at that and I'm just saying, when I lived in, I suppose when I lived in Ireland as well, I mean, I had to actually kind of like adapt, ad adapt my way of speaking. Yeah. So if I, I, look, I lived at 34 Oak Apple Green in, in Rathgar and I used to have to say eventually because they say 54 and I said, no, 34 you had to say 34 <laughs> yes, yes. so then I came back and I, mean, I, was, I live in third street so of course it became third street and everybody's like well, you live in third street <laughs> oh, good lord oh, okay that's brilliant okay so what is this about a conspiracy theorist I thought that conspiracy theorists and um, uh, what do you call those people who don't believe that there's um, global warming um, that they were on the decline <laughs> oh, this is a man that I think they are, fortunately. But this is a man who um, who denied that the Sandy Hook school massacre happened, where over 20 children were killed and everything. And, and he made so much money out of his denials that finally they took him to court because he was also upsetting, you know, the parents who lost their children. And, mm -hmm. um, and I just saw that yesterday, he's in court at the moment, um, and yesterday he had the audacity to say that, that the American uh, legal system was being as, oh, and he used some awful word about, about you know, very regimental, but, but worse than that. Mm -hmm. And he likened it to, he said, this is just like China or South Africa. I, I, I didn't know we thought that of South African... I don't think really? South Africa is very strict at all. I think there's murderers who are walking around free. Actually, on that point, um, just from a personal point of view, uh, one of the people that I knew through racing, um, car racing, Chad Wenzel, uh, was murdered the night before last by somebody who worked for him here in Johannesburg. So my, sorry, my condolences no. and status to the family as well. That was a terrible, terrible thing that's happened. I mean, all of us are in kind of shock about it. Oh. All the, the racing fraternity, especially. So it's yeah. very sad. Anyway, sorry for that. And people, please just be lecker, okay? We're, we're getting, we have enough issues to deal with without people going around and, and murdering each other with hammers. It's just not on. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, so uh, okay, let's go on to giant Happy puppets. Now, when you talk about little Al Amal, yeah. this is giant puppet, because I just keep on thinking of who's the one that had the terrorist? <laughs> uh, is it? What is it that you, you will not pass? <laughs> no, I don't know what I just remember the one, the ventriloquist puppet. There's a puppet with a, a ventriloquist. Oh, and he's okay. a, he's a kind of a, it, it, you know, I'll, I'll get to it. And then you'll put it up on okay. sapeople.com okay. so that people know what I'm talking about. Because right now, <laughs> so I know nobody mad. else does. <laughs> no. Ahmed. Ahmed is the puppet, the, the oh. ventriloquist puppet. And it's a, I kill you. I kill you. <laughs> <laughs> so what is it? Hopefully this is a nicer puppet. This, this giant is a puppet. lovely puppet. This is little Amal who already walked across Europe, went to COP26 or 23 last year in Glasgow and represents, last year she was representing a nine-year-old Syrian refugee and obviously it's a year later, so now it's a 10-year-old. And she seems to have also grown a foot. So she's 12 foot high. She was created by Handspring Puppet Company in Cape Town. They, mm -hmm. the, the, the founders actually came out of retirement to create her because it is such an important project. She is representing this young Syrian girl who is searching for her mother, so crossing borders, looking for safety, looking for her mum who went out to, to look for food and, mm -hmm. and hasn't returned. Um, and she's now in New York and is going to be visiting all five New York boroughs. And, is, and is, I think her main mission is just saying, 
please don't forget us. Don't forget the refugee children. Yeah. Oh, man. I world, just yeah. wish I could take them all home with me. Okay. And then I know that um, for... Uh, a lot of people overseas, a lot of people who enter tennis, I'm sure that they're kind of like, going, oh, no, Roger Federer has retired. You know, people can't keep on playing the same game for year after year after year. Um, but he's, I mean, he was just amazing, yes. let's be frank. Yeah. Yes, you're a realist. Well, well, that was lovely, uh, what Gary Player said. So, so South Africa's legend, I've, I've got it here somewhere. But uh, uh, I can't remember. But anyway, he just really paid tribute to Roger Federer, whose mother mm. is, of course, also South African, Lynette. Um, and he just said n n he really is the greatest of all time goat, you know, because yeah. nobody else in any sport has, has behaved so well when he loses uh, as when he wins, you know. Yeah, he's not a snowflake. He's not a, like... Uh, like I'm a diva and all of that, and I love it. No, I love that no. about him. He's a gentleman, yeah. He's a gentleman through and through. So yeah, he'll still okay, play. My, just not. yeah. Well, going on to somebody else, South African, of course. I see that my second favorite flautist, Vota Kellerman, because <laughs> my, fa my first favorite, <laughs> my first favorite is Kaylin Thompson, because she's awesome. Um, he's making South Africa proud over in Slovenia. Yeah, um, he, he's, he's been at the um, 13th Slovenian Flute Festival. He played two nights, just, just so magical. I mean, no wonder he won a Grammy Award. Uh, in fact, your friend um, Stain... Carol, Carolyn Carolyn Stain. Stain. Yeah, she she wrote the most beautiful birthday tribute for him because it was actually his birthday yesterday. Also about just what a remarkable man he he is, and um, and he said it was a bucket list thing for him because he got to play with um, the principal flutist of the Berlin F Philharmonic Orchestra. Flautist. Yeah. <laughs> you can say flutist as well. No, They're it's a both, flautist. No, sorry. no, 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 no. When when he has sent me information, he writes flutist stroke flautist. Okay, I when, suppose when, it's for the people I, who don't understand, yeah. When, uh, okay, maybe. But when I get press <laughs> info, that is what it says. <laughs> okay. But we all, all right. know my pronunciation's crap, so yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Huh? Pronunciation. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. Pronunciation. <laughs> okay, so let's go on to some local good news. Okay, um, there's. So I mean, much. Um, um, yeah, there is so much. I'm. I'm just looking at the list of stuff. So have at it, Jenny. Tell us. Okay, so a really cute story to follow on Twitter is um, is a guy uh, Tandazo Gatia who mm. actually had a hit during load shedding, but nobody, and, and, he, and he went platinum twice, but um, nobody really knew his face or anything because it was load shedding, so he wasn't out there performing. You mean lockdown? Oh, sorry, yes. And you started with <laughs> Load shedding's on all of our minds. <laughs> we have to go from one disaster to another. Okay, so we'll go back okay, to that disaster. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay, the lockdown one. So, no, so nobody really knew him, and... Um, and now he is, he is, he has just gone so viral with the most beautiful Zulu verse, uh, sung beautifully, that blends in perfectly with John Legend's Nervous. So, so it was an open verse challenge. And, okay. um, and, and you can see the two next to each other. And so everybody shared it. Everyone, including the main actress from The Wife, um, which is on Showmax, and you can watch it around the world, um, including her, tagged John Legend, and thanks, and, and he has thanked her, uh, Gatya has, because John Legend saw it on TikTok, gave it many flames, love hearts, blah, blah, blah. Then somebody else who, who's not even Zulu shared it on um, Twitter. John Legend retweeted it. This is yesterday. Retweeted it. And then somebody underneath said, and now Gatya's um, dream has always been to do something with black coffee. And mm. um, somebody retweeted it and said, come on, John Legend, you've got to do this. Get black coffee involved. He can produce it. And black coffee has already responded and, and wrote, let's go. So, oh, awesome. Yeah. So watch that space. That's, that's really, it's really wonderful to see. And he's been so humble and so excited and, 
That's great. Uh, NSRI, you know, we often speak about them with, with Nick from... Um, from Feldskun. Yeah, from Feldskun. Um, they, they did a big recruitment drive because they needed volunteers for survival swimming. So mm. important um, to, to be instructors of survival swimming. And they managed to get 39 people, which is... They are so, so excited. And that's really, really needed in South Africa. There have been so many drownings this year. Well, apart from anything else, of course, if you think, well, I live in Joburg, there's nothing I can do. Yes, you can, because there's an NSRI in Benoni, <laughs> the Benoni really? Lakes. Oh, yeah. Of course, because there's lakes and dams and... There's an NSRI. <laughs> the people in Benoni are very proud about the fact that they have an NSRI there. <laughs> I love it. Benoni has a lot. It has all the famous South African women as well. Well, not all of them. Oh, uh, okay, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But some of the biggest. Well, yeah, well, I suppose Charlize. you could call Charlize. Yeah, she's, she's okay. Yeah, she's quite big. But Benoni is a completely different area. Oh, okay. <laughs> Need a passport to go there. Oh, really? I know, I'm joking. <laughs> I don't think Most I had a passport. My, my closest, one of my closest friends is from Benoni. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's crazy. Um, there's also the SA kneeboarding team went to Portugal and they, uh, for the world champs, what is kneeboarding? Kneeboarding on water. You know, instead of surfing, you have your bo your boogie board, body board, whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. And you kneeboard. And we have a South African team. Yes, who won four gold medals. And we may even host, we've been nominated to host the next World Champs, which perhaps you should go to. Check and go and see what, what it's about. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, I can't stand up on a surfboard to save my life. Maybe I could do that. Although yeah. I'm, I'm only happy when I'm in the water if I have like scuba gear on. That's the only way I go in the water, to be honest with you. So you I'll go and. Boarding? No. I've got no balance. I'm only on, the, oh, on dry you don't ground. don't have an ocean. Yeah. No, I live in Dubai. Well, I could always go to Benoni. <laughs> 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 that could be interesting yeah uh, okay so you've got something here about um, something which I like is uh, military aircraft and I'm like sitting I've been speaking to my friend who used to fly me um, to the moon <laughs> not when I was an air hostess but he, he worked he was with 17th squadron which was the Alouettes um, up in Snake Valley and uh, you know in Pretoria yeah. Valhalla uh, so 17th and 19th squadron were the guys when you know for reach for a dream when the kids got hold of them and said they'd love to go in a helicopter then reach for a dream we get hold of me and I would organize for these kids to go in helicopters and I see oh, that um, that uh, was it hot hot 19 oh, sorry the hot 1027 also did a whole thing of, of taking kids up flying as well a couple of weeks oh, back which beautiful. was really sweet so I'm like you know I mean uh, anything to do with military aircraft but specifically helicopters although they did i was supposed to go up in an impala and they'd fitted me out for the g-suit and everything and then for some reason we didn't do it we were going to do that on treasure hunt but we we didn't get around to doing that but i have been in some amazingly fast like jet type things and i see that um the private south african defense firm paramount aerospace industries has received orders for nine of its more more <laughs> Moari <laughs> aircraft. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's the first it's military aircraft to be designed and built in the country in nearly two decades. Yeah. And I mean, it's about time we got back with that. If you think about how, um, uh, was it Danell at the time who came yes. up with the Roy Falk, which was being used yes. by the South African Defense Force? And then, of course, Malaysia. Um, bought a whole bunch of them. And then my, my same friend that used to fly me in 17 Squadron went to Malaysia to go and train all of the people on how to use the Royfolk. And that, I mean, that was a helicopter. Because that note. was the last one. That was the last yeah. that we had. So it's, it's been, I mean, that's over 20 years ago, I think. Yeah, yeah. It's about that. Yeah, it was before so, I had children. I remember. <laughs> <laughs> in the good old days, yeah. yes. <laughs> oh. We're well, talking about children. Um, yeah. I see also there you've got several Gauteng learners from Shoshenguwe Technical High School have built a one-of-a-kind solar-powered train. Tell me a bit more about that. Oh, it's, it's just amazing. They st it's taken them one and a half years. They have mm -hmm. been so dedicated. These, th these are learners. It's, it's a school that's near Pretoria. Yeah. Um, it's th the, the final product has a solar panel, power sockets, TV screen. It goes 30 kilometers an hour, but they know that it can go faster, so they are looking for funding. Um, but they worked, their, their teachers were saying they worked Christmas Day, New Year's Eve. They've just been on a mission. 
and they they knew they could do it and they did it so well I, they're going to have to roll this out quickly and get more of them happening before we have no train tracks left for trains to go on yeah did you see today um there was a protest this morning on the the mini blue train in cape town the, so you know the mini blue train so you've got these yeah. adults <laughs> crouched inside <laughs> the thing with their banners or whatever because apparently it's the best running train at the moment it's um it, it goes in a circuit back to where it started but it's always on time it doesn't break down so it's more reliable well, yes, they have train tracks down in the Cape, so at least we can still run things like that. Okay, let's get on to entertainment stuff. Um, I, I know that you put a thing up and somebody got really upset with me because it was about oh. the race walkers, okay? <laughs> and she said, I hope you're not making fun of these people. But, I mean, it was about she race walking. And they do. They, they walk in a very strange way when mm. they do race walking, okay? It is not a natural walking gait. And I said, well, that might be something that I could actually go to the Olympics on because at one stage I wanted to go in for skeet shooting. And then I realized how much money it would cost if I wanted to get the right 20-gauge um, shotgun and how much I'd be spending a month just on ammunition to be able to actually get up to the stage of Kimberly Rodder, who's like yeah. my hero. So I thought, oh, I could do race walking because um, I'm a walker. Um, <laughs> and, and then I said, but I don't know. I'm so set in my way of walking that I don't know if I could do that um, unless I join the Ministry of Silly Walks because yes. I have a very specific way of Referencing walking. Referencing John Cleese. Yeah, I, I, it was one of those things, the Ministry. I, I know that John Cleese would have an absolute, I think, <laughs> in fact, they did have a go at race walkers at one stage um, yes, be, yes. because it is a specific you way of You know he did the walk for gate. me, for me personally. Oh, yes. I especially when he's doing the, the, the faulty towers one with Germans and he does yes. that thing with his leg <laughs> flying in the air. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But anyway, these women are absolutely amazing. South They're African amazing. seniors. And, and they one is 60, one is 70, and one is 80 and they won yeah. gold at the Masters Athletics Championships in Finland, which which is absolutely amazing. And and the carte blanche presenter also had to learn the, the strange walk because it's not an easy walk. So no. So yeah, and if you're overseas, you can watch carte blanche on Showmax International and see for yourself them trying to learn it. So Melanie's not mad. No, and I'm yes, not mad and I'm also lovely. not being disparaging. In fact, <laughs> I, I have a big thing about race walkers. They make me very happy because they're walkers. Okay, what else have we got in the way of entertainment? <laughs> um, well, on the people at the moment, we've got a big thing going with lots of interviews with everybody who's going to be coming up in Blood Psalms, which is launching on the 28th of September on Show Max. It'll also be in SA and around the world. Um, and, and it'll be really nice for everyone to get behind it because it's an African fantasy. It's all about tribal allegiance and ancient Africa, but how it carries through to today. Um, so we've got interviews and a guide to the different tribes and everything. So, you know, get to know it. It's kind of like, you know, Africa's Game of Thrones. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll give that a watch. What yeah. is that on again? On? On Showmax. Showmax. Okay, yeah. so people 28th can watch of it September. Or and in That's the next meantime, Wednesday. Yeah. I don't know if it's in South Africa yet, but The Woman King, look out for that. It's, mm -hmm. it's based on a true story, a, a, a real group of women in Benin, I think. Benin. Um, it stars Viola Davis and South Africa's Tuso Mbedu, who honestly, she is she is heading for an oscar nomination she is phenomenal oh, oprah winfrey is her hugest fan um and she's in it and it was filmed in south africa so many many reasons to watch it and apparently it's also going to help change people's perception of women particularly black women it's in south in africa yeah, yeah. it's a okay. real empowering kind of movie Cool. Okay, so talking about movies, I'm going to a movie tomorrow night. Yay, for the first time in age. Well, I did go and see Maverick, but now I'm going to go and see this new one. I don't know what it's called with um, uh, George Clooney and oh, Julia yeah, 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 the Paradise. Roberts. Yeah, something and like that. I'm going to go and see. I'm going. Thank you. I've got a, uh, a, a nice ticket, which um, oh. courtesy of Tat Wolfen, who runs a competition. I think it's over on Mix 93.8 up in Joburg now as well. The home of rock oh, music. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Oh, enjoy. I went to a movie last night, but I fell asleep. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so what have you got coming up on sapeople.com? This big story for next week. Um, well, in the following few days, tomorrow is World Rhino Day, so we've got a great interview with uh, Joe Kluter, the CEO of Shamwari Private Game Reserve, 
uh, all about how to tackle um, keeping rhinos alive. So it's not mm -hmm. just about the poaching, but also the educating of people in the area so that they care about the rhino and mm. don't get misled. And then we've got a couple of, of things coming up with South Korea. Um, they had a um, heritage day, because you know it's your heritage day this weekend. Yeah, Saturday. Or yeah. some people call it Friday. I know, I know, but I don't know if that's, is it Friday? Well, oh, everybody goes out and, hey, listen, it's about the only thing you can shedding. do in load shedding. <laughs> okay, we need yeah. to go out and braai. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it's just, we, do have more, we do have more to our heritage than just braais. Yes. That, that's the only thing that Bra does is it kind of takes the limelight. But, but, but yeah, so, so in South Korea, they already celebrated this last weekend. We've got gorgeous photos of lots of South Africans in Korea. Um, and then there's actually a more sadder story, but um, from South Korea, um, an expat who just got encephalitis urgently needs some support and everything and mm. um and the minister uh flower who we always deal with uh reached out to the minister and the minister has been really really incredible so okay. we've got that story coming up fantastic so for all of those stories and more and of course if you have a story that you'd like to share you're more than welcome to get hold of jenny on sapeople.com and on the facebook page where you can go and post your beautiful pictures and we will enjoy them and i'm sure that the people overseas would love to see a taste of home as well so keep us going with the great news with the happiness with all the stuff that goes down it's lovely to see jenny's happy face again and um i'm i'm going back out into hopefully it'll rain today we're hoping we're keeping our fingers crossed that it might actually rain in Joburg at the moment that would be very pleasant holding thumbs you've got to say holding thumbs I don't get anybody to say that with yeah. hold we're holding thumbs <laughs> yeah okay <laughs> why but then you can't do anything no, no, because it's a South African <laughs> saying if I said to anybody in England or Australia I'm holding thumbs they'd go what why so, uh, why do they say fingers crossed or what yes yes, yes. Oh, okay nobody ah. says holding thumbs except South Africans Okay, we'll cross my legs as well. I'll keep everything <laughs> nice and tight. <laughs> Jane, we'll catch up with you again next week. Don't forget, to check out all the new stories that are happening on sapeople.com and we will bring you more next Wednesday. Bye-bye. Thanks, Thanks Jane. Thanks, Mel. Bye.